Okay, what we have today is a 2012 GMC Terrain all-wheel drive. Okay, here's the trains, 6045, and here is the all-wheel drive section uh, that I had to pull apart. Um, all right, so you know what? What, what we're actually going to do just with the trans um, is we're going to be pulling the front off to reseal the front of the trans. And while I have it apart, um, I'm going to change uh, the filter for him as well because when we pulled this transmission out and pulled the converter out, we've seen some oil resting here. So I have a new case gasket, I have a new pump o ring, I have a new front seal. Uh, and while I have it out, I'm going to take the pump out and put the filter in because you can't change the filter on these anyway. You got to pull the unit out and pull it apart, which I will have it. So at that point, it didn't pay not to change the filter. It has about 30,000 miles on it. But we'll get to this uh, shortly. But I did want to uh, show you what this looks like, this all-wheel drive or transfer case section. Um, what I found actually when this is you have in here you have a double-sided seal that looks this is the double-sided seal the seals are pretty much available from the dealer um, but not much more other than that is available from the dealer here's all my here's all my seals I'm changing every seal in the transfer case all came out of uh, uh, GM all right so there's a double-sided seal here there is a, a weep hole right here. Okay, so of course the double-sided seal is to keep the trans fluid from entering the transfer case and the transfer case fluid from entering the trans. There actually is no seal, uh, no axle seal here. Uh, it doesn't appear to be an axle seal here. Uh, but I'm gonna pull this apart to confirm that, but I don't think there is one. Uh, pretty much what we have, seal that, this, this part goes on here, and this seal fits in here, which I'm changing also, and that just kind of butts up against this, and then you have your um, double seal, I guess, to keep the fluid from mixing in here. So, you see some fluid, where am I now? Okay, so as you can see, the, the, the the weep hole, I could probably get a little closer in. The weep hole is right here, and then the fluid actually was coming out, running down and around. And I figured what was going on here it was very, very hard to tell. Uh, we actually left the car running for a while, and then we shut it off, and then actually we started to see the leak. But um, it was very hard to tell where it was coming from. You know, it was coming, dripping down here, uh, almost. We thought at one point it could have been the rear main seal, but the bottom line is the transmission had to come out because there was either leaking from the rear main seal, uh, from the trans, or from the transfer case. You know, it was, it was, it was one of them, but the, the, the engine is completely dry, and once we got this thing out, we kind of had more of a picture of what was going on, so we're going to be uh, uh, changing all the seals in the transfer case. And uh, again, we saw some wetness here, so I'm gonna be pulling the bell housing off, and while it's off, I'm gonna change the filter. Now, when I was going through this transfer case, taking this thing apart, I've actually never taken one apart before. It's not that bad to do. Um, I think I see possibly what was going on. Okay, so this transfer case uh, casing sits like this, and this gear, all right, is gonna go through here and then the end splines into the trans here all right so when I'm looking at it I pull it out and I see this bearing is no good all right so chances are what was going on here is with this bad bearing uh, it's very possible that it was uh, laying down on the seal uh, causing possibly some you know fluid to come out of the weep hole here so I think that's what was going on because this race was gonna sit right in here and then of course you know this goes on like this and with this bearing it was pretty shot so I think there might have been some movement possibly on the shift 
and causing it to lay down on the seal, causing it to leak out. I think possibly that's what was going on. And uh, speaking to uh, the dealership on this bearing, I managed to press the bearing off, get some numbers off of it. Uh, they said it is not available. And then I asked about the, you know, the whole gear and stuff itself, and they said nothing for this transfer case is available. I guess obviously except for the seals. Uh, so, you know, if you've got broken gears or anything like that, you have to buy a complete transfer case. Uh, so I called uh, a specialty uh, transmission supplier uh, that, that deals with bearings and stuff, and I gave him the number, and he said that's a good number. And he says, oh, let me research it, I'll, I'll call you back. He called me back and says, yeah, I can get it. It's going to take, um, you know, three, four days, but it's a lot better than, you know, having to buy a, a transfer case. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be a, a common problem. This thing only has, a, like I said, about 30,000 miles on it. We've got a, you know, a pretty, pretty screwed up uh, bearing here. Uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but... You know, it's all, it's all pitted up. It's very, very bad. So that's probably, uh, I think, was the cause of the issue. And uh, that is the transfer case. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'll get a little closer here. Actually, let me get a little closer and I'll just kind of go over this stuff real, you know, very quickly. Again, just to show you the weed pole and stuff, because I know I'm kind of far away with the camera angle. Uh, and then we're going to get into uh, taking the bell housing off, taking the pump off, um, and you know, installing a new filter, uh, putting a new case gasket on, pump oil ring, and we'll, we'll you know, kind of just do the whole thing together, put that trans back. But not going to be pulling it apart, unfortunately. Just uh, going to be pulling the bell housing off to seal it up. All right, so let me just get a little closer and uh, uh, we'll start working on it. Okay, so once again, all right, inside this uh, transfer case housing here, there is a, a double-sided seal and the weep pole is right here, which uh, you can see it's clean. You can see it's clean and how the fluid was running down, okay, around to the uh, outside. Uh, and the double seal, it's, a, it's one seal, because normally when you have a double seal and the weep holes in the middle, you have two seals back to back, but this is one, one seal, so I'm thinking how can fluid get past and come out of the hole? So I open the package to look at the seal, and there's a, if you could see it, there's a bunch of little, little holes in the seal here, and that's how uh, the fluid would get down into the middle in between the two seals and you know probably come out of these holes and, and then of course come out of the uh, uh, weep hole there. So we're going to be changing that seal. There's a, another seal here and that double sided seal goes on this side. Okay and the seal here seals the shaft. Shaft goes through and that seals that there. seal in here that I'm going to change and is actually a rubber seal to seal the two halves together that's going to be changed. All right then you have your o-ring here and then I got to take this apart after but you got to take the nut off and knock the pinion out and there's um, seals in here as well and bearings and then you have that uh, thick seal again that kind of sits right here, it sits inside here like this, and it butts up against this here when you put the two halves together. So that's it. I mean, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I've never taken one apart before, but it's not that bad to do. And again, uh, seals are available, uh, but nothing else from the dealer is available other than the entire unit. I don't know how much that is, I did not ask them. But if you need uh, to get the bearings, like I said, I don't know if this is going to be a common problem with uh, about 30,000 miles on it with this bad bearing. 
but if you get the numbers off the bearing and do some research, you can probably get the bearing, you know, there's many bearings in here, you can probably get the bearing that you need uh, through a supplier. So the, uh, the supplier that, uh, that is here in New York um, that I use, you know, it's not too far from, it's probably 15, 20 minutes away, is uh, called Beardsley Transmission Parts. And uh, those guys are pretty good with crossing numbers over and stuff like that for um, finding bearings. These guys they did a pretty good job. I had this one um, transfer case that I got from the Jaguar dealership. Uh, actually, it was, yeah, it was the all-wheel drive unit. It was making noise, took it apart, found bad bearings. And that, that transmission company, that appears to transmission company, couldn't get them. And I actually uh, found them in from a supplier in Canada. I think we researched the internet, found a supplier in Canada who had to get them from the UK, but we got them. It took about a month, but we got them. Instead of buying a unit for, you know, $2,500, we were able to rebuild it and uh, send it back to Jaguar. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, let me just get set up and we're gonna start, um, we're gonna pull the bell housing and his trains off and uh, take the pump out and uh, kind of just you know seal it up and put it back together so just give me a few minutes and we'll get started on that okay all right so what I did yesterday because uh, I may you know once I get these bolts on I'm probably gonna stand this thing up uh, to make sure that you know when I pull it up I don't really lose anything or hopefully won't lose anything what I did here, here is your um, input speed sensor. All right, so I took the bolt out and just pulled the sensor out, also drained the unit. So now I can stand it up and I don't have to worry about, you know, breaking the sensor. All right, so I'm just gonna start taking the bolts out and then we'll probably stand it up and see if we can just pull the uh, pull the bell housing off. All right, so let's uh, get started with that. These look like 13 millimeter bolts here. side. So those should be all the bolts, should be everything there. Okay, so we also have a uh, front seal uh, retaining ring. So let's see how easy that's going to come out.
Okay, here's the front seal retaining ring. Might as well take that out now. All right, so I'm gonna stand this thing up. Remember, I got the sensor out of the way. I don't wanna break that. some more. Alright, let's see if I can just lock the wood under here. Just to make sure. Alright, let's see if this uh, comes off here. That was pretty easy. No prying at all. Move this back. I'll give you a shot of this unit inside. Can't really, uh, you know, see too much as far as clutches or anything though. But I'll give, I will give you a shot of it. Let me just push this thing back. I'll leave it up like that. changing we're going to be pulling these bolts out we're going to be pulling a pump out changing the o-ring and front seal here is the big gasket I'm going to change okay all right so let me just get my uh, tools ready and uh, what we can do is pull these apart here is a bearing okay which is going to go right over there, put that back in place, okay, got a large bearing here, all right, so let me just uh, get ready for this and we'll pull the bell housing apart and change the uh, pump o-ring front seal, I'm going to wash this up as well, so I got the tank he heating up, uh, okay, so let me just get set up for this, be back in a minute, okay, We'll start by taking this shield off here. We actually call this the uh, the differential uh, baffle is what they call it. Okay, and now what we're going to pretty much do is take the 13 millimeter bolts out and we're going to lift the pump and the filter out as one. But now certainly is the time to change this filter since you can't do it. So you push it down, twist it, and lock it in place. Here is the pump O-ring that we're going to change. And the front seal, since it's held in with um, a snap ring, it's probably going to come out fairly easy. But I guess what I'll do is let me just get my seal puller. Okay, 
And that, of course, they didn't take out. Not here. Okay. All right. All right. So this should come out fairly easy because, again, it's helping with some fabric. Here we go. And here is the front seal here. Okay. All right. So what I want to do now is. I want to wash this up in the tank. Now when you have a little seal here that goes over, uh, it looks like a piece by the chain, big back plastic lube piece by the chain, uh, probably to make sure that oil gets there. Uh, and that goes in this one, this, whoops, wait, you guys can't see. There's two of them. There's one here, one here, and it was in this one. Just sits in there just like that. Alright, so we'll put this aside. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to clean this uh, belt housing up because my tank is heated up. And again, there is no, uh, there is no seal, no axle seal. So that double-sided seal in that transfer case is uh, what's keep, what keeps the oil separated. Um, all right, so let me uh, wash this up, get set up. I'll give you a shot of you know what this looks like. We're really not going to go any further. Uh, don't have to really pull this thing apart because we're just doing this, and um, then we'll put it all back together. All right, so give me a few. Uh, I'm going to get everything cleaned up, and I will be back shortly. All right, here is a quick shot of the. Trans, of course, with the bell housing off. So I just want to show you the, there's the, you know, chains and sprockets and oil baffles again. And just want to show you what that looks like. You got some seals over here, a row of seals over here on the side. Here's my uh, nice clean uh, bell housing. Just came out of the tank. Uh, so I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and we're going to start uh, assembling this unit uh, back together again. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll uh, knock the front seal in. You know, this thing uh, should go in fairly easy again because it is, uh, again, held in with a uh, snap ring or retaining clip. But sometimes if you have to bang these in and you have a very shallow uh, edge here because there is a spring behind this seal and sometimes the spring pops out, you can put a little grease in here, you know, to hold the uh, spring in place so it doesn't pop out as you're knocking the seal in. All right, so we're gonna put this seal in. This thing actually kind of pushes down by hand. Okay, now we'll put our retaining clip in. All right, that looks good. Okay, here is our uh, pump o-ring. Okay, that looks good. And then we have the seal. I'm sorry, the filter. The filter, uh, we're going to grease up the O-ring, we're going to uh, put the filter in and turn it, and it'll lock it in place. So I'm going to put a little grease around the O-ring here. Okay. So there's a couple of tabs, a couple of tabs on this filter. you got to line up with the opening. So it's basically going to go in like this, and then turn it and lock it in place. Okay. All right, so we're going to set this pump in place. And we 
have our bolts. Now I just got a, um, I belong to uh, ATSG. There, technically, there really is no, no manual on this yet, but I guess the fact that the transmission is becoming so popular, probably in about two weeks, ATSG, uh, the company based out of Miami, uh, is going to have, um, is going to have a manual out, because I got an email and it's, and it's in the works now. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of what the uh, torque spec is on these, but I'm going to do these to uh, 20 foot-pounds. back in. I don't want to forget to do that. All right, now we're going to put our um, baffle back on. ready to go put the bell housing back on so I'm going to pull this uh, pull this case forward here all right I guess I should back out a little bit so uh, you guys could see when I'm flipping this thing up So we got some bearing surfaces. I want to grease up here. All right, I want to make sure that this bearing here does not fall out of place, so I just want to grease this in place. Okay. All right, so I have my gasket. I got this right out of the uh, dealer as well. All right, now uh, you know sometimes what I, what I do, um, you know, because this gasket is is metal and rubber, and where the metal part sits. You know, sometimes you get some buildup or something there. So, you know, of course I, I wipe it clean uh, just to make sure the surfaces are smooth. I mean, it's what I do uh, with Hondas and everything. Uh, you know, when the two case hairs get together, I take the fine part of the stone and just run it along, you know, just to make sure it's all smooth. Because uh, there was, you know, little crap on here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid the gasket may not sit right, it possibly may leak. So I just run the stone around it. This is really nice and smooth. This is really nice and smooth here. 
So we'll put our gasket on. Okay, it's not the flattest thing in the world. Once the train goes on, it should be okay. All right, so now we're gonna flip the, uh, once the bell housing goes on, I mean. Now we're gonna flip the, um, the bell on. All right, we also have a seal in here, probably for the torque converter, I betcha. Now we're gonna put some grease there. And let's see how easy this goes back on. Now we gotta get into this ring gear, the differential ring gear. So, much, you know, it came right out, but let's see how easy it's going to go. Okay. Went right in. Drop right in, lined up, everything looks good. Right, so we'll put our bolts in. Let me uh, slide this over. One down there. Let me get these bell housing bolts in. Another one goes here, and now this one. so I don't cross thread anything. There's a camera sunk in there. It's a little tough to get your fingers in there to, to start them. each side just to make sure nothing pops up. Okay, input shaft is turned. Okay, again, I'm not 100% sure, honestly, what the torque spec is, so I'm going to do it. Same thing.
Okay. And right, let me just go turn my light back on. And just really have to put the input speed sensor. I believe it's the input speed sensor back in. And uh, this will be done. Let me just, uh, my lights are shutting off on me again here. Okay. All right. Bring this down. Okay. All right, so here's the 6T40. And that's really about it. So we sealed up the front, put a new filter in. I'm waiting for my uh, parts for this transfer case. Of course, I have all the seals. I didn't want to start working on it until I had all the seals. Uh, but then taking it apart, you know, we found the bad bearing. Uh, so at this point, I'm waiting for this. It's going to probably be working days, you know, three to four working days before I get that. Uh, so what I'll do in the meantime is I'll just clean up the parts and put them aside. You know, I could probably knock the seals in. Um, but I guess that's about it. So we're working on this uh, 2012 GMC Terrain with the 2.4 um, 6T45 Trans. And I thank you guys for watching. And have a great day. We'll see you next one.